Hi, it's Bobby, and I saw these um, little Hoosville, or what I call Hoosville Dr. Seuss tree cupcakes, actually on Paul Bradford's site, and just had to make them and show you how to make them. So that's what I'm going to do, is show you how to make the trees and how to make a rose if you don't have any cutters. So let's have some fun. All right, so to make the trees, what I call Hoosville trees or Dr. Seuss trees. I don't even know what they're called, but that's what I'm going to call them because they look good to me. You need some gum paste, which I have already conditioned and now I'm kneading. And you're going to need any paintbrush. I have already put a little bit of Crisco on my paintbrush so that I can get my tree off later on. You're going to row a cone shape. Oh, there goes my paintbrush. And you want it to be, let me put this under there so we don't go flying around. My little waffle mat. There goes my cone. Okay, so you want it to be fairly thin. You don't want a very fat bottom tree. And you want one end of that tree to be tapered and come to a point. So you're just going to put even pressure on the bottom and more pressure towards the top. And just roll out your little trees. You can make them any size you want. Keep in mind the size of your cupcake. This one looks like it's going to be fairly long. It actually cut his bottom off. I'm going to cut his bottom off it's a little bit longer than I want. Put his little bottom off. Not a big deal. His bottom's been cut off. Alright. And then what you want to do is you want to take your paintbrush. You want to start with the thicker side of the paintbrush. And the reason you want to put Crisco on it is because you're going to have to pull these out later. You just kind of want to wrap them around. Make them nice and curled. And kind of put them on a foam board, board or dimple foam to dry. I already have one made. And if Red said you want to put something in the bottom, either a toothpick, a little piece of pasta. I only had Capanelli, which um, actually spaghetti would have been a little bit better than that. And for extra security, I'm just going to put a little bit of royal icing on him. And I'm going to go ahead and stick him into the center of my cupcake. Hold them down. And then what I'm going to do to give it a nice holiday feel, I'm going to bring in some paper towels so I don't get powder all over my board. And this is um, Fairly Blue by Crystal Touch, or I mean Crystal, I'm sorry, Crystal Colors. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom here. And the way I did this bottom of my cupcake was I covered it in fondant and then rolled it on a lace mat to give it a nice lace texture. Put a little water underneath and added it on. Royal icing keeps them a little bit more in place than just a tiny piece of pasta. So we're going to brush him with our blue, our crystal blue color, very blue. Got a nice little shimmer. All right, so now that we've done our little Hoosville tree, there are a couple embellishments that go on the cupcake. I did some holly berries 
with this PME Holly Berry cutter and it binds it when you press down. And they come out looking like this and then I just luster dust them. I did some snowflakes with this cute little snowflakes from Kitbox. And they came out looking like this. And then I made a little poinsettia with just an orchard calyx cutter. The other thing I did was I made roses without any cutters at all. And I'm going to share with you how to do that because I'm sure that you all know how to make holly berries, holly, holly leaves by uh, cutting them out and snowflakes and whatnot. But this might be something you haven't seen. And this was taught to me by a man named Chef Ralph when I renewed my vows. All right, so we're going to make a cone, and we just did that. And then we're going to take our cone and flatten him out and make a cute little bud out of the cone. And I realize this is a huge cone. We're not going to be using this whole thing, but it gives me a nice foot to work with, a base to work off of. So once you get this to where you like it, you want to starch. You want to roll in your left side as you roll around your right side so that you get a nice little spiral. Come to the side and then you want to take some, I used a dark baby blue. I'm going to go with a light baby blue now. Knead them up a little bit. That's actually pretty needed. And the easiest way that I have found to do this is you're going to do three petals and then five. And this is a really fun way to do roses if you don't have any cutters or viners available to you at the time. And that's what happened. Uh, when we were renewing our vows, the hotel had let my daughter and I, Sydney, make our uh, renewal cake. And I wanted to put roses on top, and they didn't have any cutters. So Chef Ralph showed me this neat little trick. He said that he had learned it quite a few years ago when he was in culinary school. And I'm going to share it with you. So you make a nice little log with even pressure. And you're gonna need, this is just a sandwich bag that I have put some Crisco on both sides. Not a lot, just a little. And what you're gonna do is cut three of the same size and then little slices off your log and then five of the same size. And then you're gonna roll them up, making it nice and seamless. And then you're going to take your finger, and the most important thing to remember here is you want to keep a very thick ridge at the back and make your top thin. So if you can start seeing through the top of your petal, you know to stop. And you want, like I said, to keep that back kind of thin, thick. Thin. And then Depending on how fast you work and how soft your gum paste is, you may or may not need any egg wash or egg white wash. Liquid egg white. I'm going to go ahead and put it on just in case. It's kind of warm in this kitchen. So there's my first one.
in my second one. I'm just going to tuck him in underneath, keeping them higher than the spiral that you just made your bud. Okay, nice and tight. And then your third one. And you can do your cupcakes with any type of flower you want. You don't, you don't have to do these little flowers. These little, I just thought it'd be nice to show you these roses, and I like the way that they looked on the cupcake. All right, so that's over there. Now I'm going to do again five more the exact same way. Rolling five balls. Putting them in my bag, giving me enough space to work. And these little cupcakes would be an awesome family project to do. Or a great little favor to give away at any holiday party that you're going to this year. They have a nice little wild factor. They're fairly easy to make. You pretty much can do whatever you want with them. All right, so we're thinning out the five, same exact way. And excuse my middle finger, but it happens to be my strongest finger, so it's the one I'm using. You would just want to thin it out until you get a nice, so you can kind of see through it. Like I can see my green board through it, and I'm still keeping that thick back. I don't know that I'd want to do a whole wedding cake like this, but it's a fun way to do roses. Especially if you find yourself, and I tore him, but that's okay. Roses aren't pretty. Him up first. So I'm putting my egg wash, or my egg white on. I'm going to find the seam, put it around that first center seam, in the first layer. And then just like you do with any other type of rose that you make, I'm going to bring in spiraling each layer. And I would say to do these embellishments maybe a day ahead of time and then bake up your cupcakes and put your fondant on or icing if you choose. So that they're nice and dry and you can dust them. We find one fifth one, and that's all you're going to put on there because if you remember, it's a very small cupcake. Could handle much more. Popping out on me. Just get them in there. And once you get them in, you're going to pinch the bottom as you are. Petals flare out. And then just pinch off. Cut away your excess. And then shape your roses. Sometimes using a brush will help. That way you don't have to worry about tearing those beautiful petals you just made. So I'm going to kind of bring them in and put them on a foam board to dry, a dimpled foam, excuse me. 
and the next day you'll have a beautiful rose that you can dust. So now that we have all of our embellishments, we're going to put our cupcake together. We just move this stuff away. So we have our cupcake with our little Who's Bill tree. And the first thing that I'm going to put on is some of these holly leaves. So I've got some white and some blue. And I've got some royal icing that I'm going to put them on with. And you can pretty much put them wherever you want. I'm going to actually decorate my tree with it. This does not want to stay put, does it? And let's grab a nice little snowflake. I'll grab one that doesn't have an opening, I think. The snowflake on it. And then I have some really cute silver beads. I just love these little silver balls. We're going to hope they don't go flying all over my kitchen. And a tweezer. So I'm going to do a row of three going down this way. I'll make three go down this way. I had my royal icing parchment bag underneath a paper towel, and I think it got too wet. So my royal icing is a little bit more liquidy than I would like. But the consistency at once, we're going to make it work. All right, so now I have those on. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to put on my roses. And my little poinsettia. I'm going to put my poinsettia on first. So since I'm going to use this green color for the center of my poinsettia, And if you remember from when I did my candle, my scroll candle cookie, we just put a center in there. And that's all I'm doing with this. And for the roses, I'm actually going to pipe in to pipe in the calyx. So I'll have a nice green calyx but I'll also have something that helps it stick. So there's one rose. We'll put this one here. So it's a little bit fatter, as you can see. These leaves. My calyx. Right about there. I don't think I have room for this other one, so I won't even put them in. And then I think I might just put a ball or two on my little tree, and then we'll make the border. So we'll come down the tree like this. There. 
So just like you're decorating your tree. And then you've seen me do a shell border before. We're just going to make a bulbous back release and pull it out. Even pressure, releasing, and pulling back so it's connecting each and every time. And all the same size. Keeping your tip clean. I chose to keep my shells white. You probably, if you wanted to, once your royal icing is dry, could take a little Everclear to that very blue and paint them if you want a little color. I really like this white and light blue look. So I'm going to keep mine that way. But my husband loves color so he would probably want me to add color. There you go. I would say this is about a two-day project just because you need to let your pieces dry. But pretty much once they're there and put together, you're done. Thank you for joining me.